Okay. Okay, Dan, I think I may have something to say here. We we're talking about love and relief. So I'll, well, I'll just let you. You know, the, one of the most important scriptures, of course, is in the, the book of John. I'm just going to read it out of, I've read so many times out of the King James. I just thought maybe we'll use the Geneva Bible for a moment. Uh, uh, Geneva Bible is quite an interesting Bible. People were executed uh, for having it. The English Empire was quite upset about this uh, translation. Uh for reasons that it had footnotes that was uh, leading to the, hip, you know, the hypocrisy and uh, uh, literally, uh, shall we say, treason that the English Empire, along with the Pope, um, had basically entered into uh, through the way they were conducting themselves as the representation of the authority of God and uh, representing his son, but they were actually leading the flock down legalism because they benefited so much from it. And of course, God's judgment is going to be coming on them shortly. So you'll be seeing this transpire in, uh, uh, you know, our uh, the, the world, so to speak, that uh, um, that we are experiencing right now at the moment, but it is going to be coming down. So there's going to be a lot of very, very upset pseudo legal Christians when they see this come down because they're going to believe that actual Christianity has fallen, but it will be false Christianity that's come down under Protestantism and the uh, Popish uh, Roman Catholic Church. But we go to uh, uh, we go to John three, verse fifteen, and it says that um, says basically one second here three. Just making sure I'm getting to the right spot here. Um, I'm in three. I hope I'm in three. Hold on, three verse fifteen. Um, and uh, says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Um, that's quite interesting. Um, and then verse 16 states, uh, it's a little different. I mean, maybe I'm just reading this a little different than the King James. So I'm going into verse 16 in the Geneva. It says, for God so loved the world. So three verse 16 states, for God so loved the world that he hath given his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay? So very, you can read the whole chapter. You should read the whole chapter anyways. Don't always just isolate one verse. But um, it, it, it talks about the love of God. In fact, you'll go into other scriptures that say God is love. Now, he must have loved us uh, to bring us into uh, being made in his image as it was before Adam sinned. Um, we were made in the image of God, and then uh, Adam corrupted uh, that position that we once had uh, as perfect creation. Because God is eternal, we would be eternal. So certainly God would not make something in his image that would not be eternal. Uh, and so the purpose of God got interrupted for a moment uh, through basically one man, and through the conniving of one fallen angel, uh, Satan, who basically had beguiled uh, Eve and then uh, had entered also by the consent of Adam into willful sin. And through this, we've all inherited this sin. But it was an act of love when God first did his creation. Um, and when you look at the creation and how perfect it is, despite the world that seems to want to corrupt it on a daily level, polluting the air, polluting the water, uh, you know, disposing of massive things uh, to pollute the soil, uh, all the things that we do that show that we're, we're certainly not looking at the at life as truly a gift, but um, it is definitely based on love. And so when you talk about the believers, those who accept Christ, they're called set apart believers. They would have either true belief or false belief. Which one? Well, if you're on the wrong side, you'll have the false belief. You'll believe in false gods. Um, you will serve false lords. You will serve the God of Mammon, uh, who is basically the invention of Satan. Um, or you can actually be serving the true God uh, and his anointed son. So when you look at the word belief, it's quite interesting because the root of the word belief has the word leaf, which is L-I-E-F. And if you're going into the 
1828 Noah Webster's uh, available. It is available online. The word leaf shows up and it says, dear beloved. Um, then you have leaf as an adverb. The word coincides with love. Uh, the primary sense is to be free, prompt, ready. Okay, so there's the word leaf showing it has to do with the word love. Okay, so it coincides with love. <laughs> okay, so when we look at belief, it's be love. Um, and true belief would relate to God is love. And therefore, if we have true belief and we believe in his son and he sent his only begotten son, you're actually wearing that symbol of love by acknowledging uh, your Christian name. Unfortunately, when we acknowledge the false name, the pseudo name, uh, the mask legal name that covers up what is the love of God of sending his son, uh, which gives us the promise of eternal life for having accepted something we can't earn. It's just a gift. Um, and it's presented before we could even say that legal last name. Um, we are bearing the gift, but we can certainly do something that's contrary to this graced gift by doing something disgraceful, um, by not seeing um, what is involved in just the simplicity of the language and the words that we use. So therefore, to have true belief, it would be to have true love. And that was considered to be the ident well, we're not using the word identifying, but the um the symbol of those that were the disciples of Christ. It would they would be known by the love amongst themselves. Unfortunately, when you go into the legal sense of, of what we bear in these legal surnames, we're at war with God and we're doing things that are atrocious, like that of being nothing more than a beast. Uh, a beast of burden being used by those who manipulate us uh, to be outside the covenant of God. So uh, we know these evil uh, uh, parties, uh, these Pharisees, um, have literally just taken over the governments of men, um, and they follow their leader, the devil, as Jesus said, woe unto lawyers, for you take away the key of knowledge that they're placing burdens upon uh, others that they themselves do not carry. So they are literally removing you uh, from the kingdom of God based on their manipulation and maneuvering just simply through nothing more than a spell. Um, but this is nothing but an error um, placed over one's head because there can be no legal surname in reality um, because it's a fiction, because the truth of God brought his son who canceled out all legal indebtedness, according to Colossians 2, 13 to 15. So um, quite a... Uh, um, quite a position there. So uh, we uh, we even look at uh, Matthew Henry uh, when he was commenting on the birth of Christ and talking about even uh, the book of Matthew, the first uh, you know gospel that's in there of good spell. Of course, that's what gospel also means is good spell. So you could either have a good spell or a bad spell in your name. And the penman, uh, which was Matthew, was by birth a Jew by calling. Uh, he was also in the Roman world, a publican, which was a tax collector, till Christ commanded his attendance, and then he left the receipt of custom. So you will be required to leave the realm of the receipt of custom that you may have been birthed in temporarily until you've come to a knowledge of Christ, and therefore the uh, cancellation of that certificate of debt uh, goes along with the journey, uh, leading in, into the escape of exemption. So um, anyways, we'll leave that with you for this moment. And uh, hopefully uh, you realize that we're doing more time on the Zooms. So if people uh, are not getting on the Zooms, I certainly uh, recommend you do so, uh, because we're not going to spend that much time putting up YouTube videos, though this one will be up there uh, for the benefit of all who can still access. All right. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it.